Happy Sabbath. Happy day. We are happy to welcome you to our Bible our lesson discussion uh, this Sabbath morning. This is Current Community SDA Church. And together with me uh, in the studio is Sister Sipora. Sipora, you can say Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, viewers. And uh, we are continue with the lesson three of the conflict series. Um, our title today is Light Shines the Darkness. As, but before we start, I just want to invite Sister Spora to pray. Let us uh, believe and pray. Mighty God in heaven, we want to give you glory. Another Sabbath morning that we have gathered to discuss the lesson, we are on the great controversy. Lord, as we get deeper into this great controversy, to understand the difference between light and the darkness, to understand your will, Lord, we pray that your holy presence may abide with us, to walk with us through the lesson, that Lord, as even we discuss, you may reveal the truths to us, even to the viewers, that, Lord, together we may walk this journey, and that if it is your will, that each one of us may continue to move closer to you. Lead us even as we begin, and as we come to the end of it, Lord, we shall continue to give you glory, for this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, Lord. Sister Swara, for the prayer. Um, lesson one, uh, this second quarter took us to the origin of the war or the great controversy, a war that is started in heaven. And indeed, we are able to see that um, the war started in a holy place and the person or the devil who started this war was cast down here and he, he brought down the war to us. We are all involved in this war. Last week, we were able to see the focus uh, of this war. Indeed, it's about God's love and also uh, the selfishness from the devil. God loves to reach to us, loves to uh, guide us and lead us, but there is one, the enemy, who hates and does not want us to experience God's love. And today, uh, as we go to our lesson three, as I said, the title, Light Shines in the Darkness, our memory text is taken from John chapter 12, verses 35. Uh, yes, verses 35. We can also read verse 36 just to make it complete. The Bible reads, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. I want to read verse 36 also. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. As we see here, Jesus Christ is speaking to his disciples. And he said he will be with them in the person for a short time. And they should take advantage of his presence where they had him with them. Uh, like li a light shining in a dark place, he would point out the way they should walk as a disciples. If they walk in this light, then they would become signs of light. So, what we are seeing here, Jesus Christ is the light. I think in the same John 8, 12, Christ refers to himself as the light. And so, as God's children, as Christians, we are to be Christ-light. 
because letting his right, also letting his right to shine through us. As we go through this lesson, one thing which comes out clear is that actually Satan is uh, the destroyer of those who love the light. And indeed, certain delights uh, in war and confusion. As we'll be going through this lesson, we'll be able to see that Satan, uh, who is also personified as the dragon, desires to destroy God's people. He's also referred as the serpent because he uses all his cunning lies to deceive them. What we see here, the years after Christ um, went to heaven, we see the church going through a period of persecution and many, many challenges. Many Christians faced torture, faced persecution and cruel punishment uh, from uh, the enemy. And as we'll be seeing in today's lesson also, we see that actually, as certain continue with this persecution, many believed and were converted to Christianity. And in the end, certain had to change the strategy. So as we read in Revelation 12, 12 verse, verse 9, the Bible says, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Satan was cast. And indeed, he came down here with a lot of anger and fury. And as we go through the history of the church, we know that actually Satan changes his strategy. And the way it happened, it was so interesting that uh, Emperor Constantine the Great, uh, who was actually a pagan emperor, uh, was converted and set out to unite both the church and the nation or the state. And in the process, several pagan people were converted to the church. And they also came together uh, with the kind of uh, doctrines, uh, things that they believed in pagan worship, and in the process, uh, compromise came into the church. So even in the period of persecution and the compromise, God was with his people. That is very, very humbling. And what we need to appreciate that during this dark period, Christ's light shone or continued to shine uh, through the darkness in the lives of those who are faithful um, to Christ. And so as we continue this lesson, just want us now perhaps to request my sister to make a comment and then to also tell us what are these um, compromises. The strategy that the strategy the devil use, or the instruments of this war of compromise, Sister Spora. Ah, thank you, Elder. Indeed, we have seen the love of God, that even as the devil or the dragon tries to lure humanity into darkness, Christ through his person when he was on earth and through his word, has kept showing us the light and the way to go. And uh, even as the devil tries to cheat and uh, lure humanity into his side, still we have those that have stood the temptations of the times and they have remained faithful. But what is interesting, Elder, is the fact that uh, the more the devil persecuted and uh, kills, the more the church spread, and especially during the early times. So uh, 
The devil, therefore, is forced to change strategy because the confrontation and the persecutions never seemed to work. And he's changing strategy, and the strategy now he brings on board is compromise. And what is comp compromise? When I looked at uh, the meaning of compromise, I realized that uh, it is a situation where you have two parties who are having different, differing opinions, trying to settle the conflict by reaching a middle ground or uh, reaching an agreement such that one party seeds some of his or her principles and the other party also seeds some and they meet somewhere in the middle and that is what the devil is going to use uh, i want us to look at um, john 14 6 and see uh, something uh, 14 6 says jesus said to him i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself has given his word and is talking to us that it is through him that we can go to the Father. He is the life and is the truth. But again, if you proceed, uh, go back and look at um, John 8, verse 44, uh, it gives us something else. It says, uh, the Bible says that you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Mm -hmm. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. So in the spirit of compromise, the devil has started using lies as one of the weapons. While Jesus on one side is saying, I'm the truth, I am the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. But those who choose to listen to the devil, the devil is selling lies. And uh, what does he do in selling the lies? The writer is telling us that while Jesus is the author of truth, Satan is the author of lies. Mm -hmm. Jesus is loving and is, 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 you know, he wants to accommodate all of us. The devil is selfish and wants to, 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 to change the times and the laws so that indeed people may uh, turn to his side. The writer makes a comment in the lesson of today and he says, in contrast, Satan is a liar and the father of lies. He is prepared to use lies, deceit, misinformation, and a distortion of truth to lead God's people astray. So one of the weapons that we have seen that comes out clearly is that the devil tries to twist and bring up, come up with lies. The good example we have, viewers, is the, the what happened to our first parents. God had given instructions that to not eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. But the devil comes and twists God's statement and says, because God said, for the day you will eat of the same, you will surely die. The devil comes and changes the statements and says that for sure you will not die. Instead, you will become as wise as God. So, but what happens when Eve tries it and gives it to Adam? Indeed, death comes to the world. And so you can see that whatever the devil is trying is not truth, but just lies. I just want us to also look at um, Proverbs uh, 23, verse 23, and see what the writer wants us to learn. He says, but buy the truth and do not sell it. Mm -hmm. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. How do we buy truth? How do we buy wisdom and understanding? Is there a market for the same? No, the word of God is the truth. Jesus himself is the truth. By accepting to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we understand this truth. The same devil 
uh, we see well understands scriptures very well. How do we avoid being compromised? The devil understands scriptures and is now using the spirit of compromise, trying to twist one of the strategies is to become a liar. And for you to become a smart liar, you use what is available to make it different so that it can suit your times. For us to overcome uh, these snares of the devil, we must therefore understand the will of God by understanding his word. It is by the word that even the savior of the world had resisted his attacks. How can we resist the attacks? How can we avoid being compromised? It is by understanding the word of God. Jesus kept on saying it is written. When the devil is trying to get us into compromising the, 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 the tenets of Christianity, how do we stand? We need to understand the will of God. We need to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We need to surrender to the will of God because the devil twists. He, another thing that the devil does is to keep us ignorant of the word of God, such that we really do not understand what it is. We do not even have time to read it. We are ignorant of, of what it is. At some point, the Romans prohibited, or sometimes we are told that there is a time in history that people were not allowed to access the Bible. Times may come, God forbid, that we may not be allowed to access the Bible. Would we have understood the will of God such that we are able to stand uh, the times and tell the devil to keep off? Sometimes we may look like Christians, but we do not fully practice what it means to be a Christian. We do not understand or stand by the truth. We, we, why? Because, as I've said earlier, we do not read the Bible. So for us to avoid compromise, Elder, I think we need to read it. To read this word, we need to be available to be used of God. We need to depend on Jesus Christ so that we can know the truth because Jesus himself has said, I am the truth, I am the life. You cannot get to the Father unless through me. Thank you, Sister. Indeed, as the Russian writer says, Christ presented the shield of eternal truth, saying, it is written. written. You know, as you are talking about the devil misquoting, you know, it's interesting when you read Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 16. The Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, God commanded, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you said, surely die. When you go to chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Contradicting the express word of God. Mm -hmm. And indeed, that's what the devil is doing. But Christ says he is, he is the way. He is as the path to the Father. We can only be able to reach the Father through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Number two is the truth. This is very significant. He is the reality of all God's promises in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So we need to be anchored well in the Bible so that we are able to see and uh, walk this truth. Jesus Christ says he is the life. He joins his divine life to ours. And now because of what is done, we are joined to Jesus Christ, our elder brother. So indeed, Christ is the truth. And we need to be anchored in the truth because the truth is the word of God. Uh, Satan, not the devil, has another strategy. He conceals himself as in his sheep's clothing. 
but inwardly he is a wolf. A wolf is a very interesting animal. Mm -hmm. But what is all the whole purpose of concealing and hiding himself is actually to distort sound doctrine. And uh, I want us to go to the book of Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Paul had this message to the uh, Ephesian people. Um, chapter 20 from verse 27. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. And we see here, <clears throat> Paul is actually cautioning the church leaders. And of course, the entire Christian fraternity. This is a message and a warning to us. And uh, the message is very clear that they should be faithful to the scriptures and uh, share it is eternal truths with their congregations. Of course, we see Paul warning the uh, leaders that the church should be prepared because of what is about to happen. He saw that the wolves, and of course this Satan, um, concealing himself in sheep clothing. And in the process, his focus would be to attack the Bible truth. Number two, he will also continue to persecute from within and from without, and also will spread false doctrines. As we see here, Paul, is the message he gave to the leaders then, and I think it's a message that is applicable even today, that even from within, there will be opposition. There will be people who will be dressed in uh, cl uh, cloth, but the truth is that they are acting for the devil. Because the whole purpose and the whole uh, objective of the devil is to lead God's people astray. And so as a church, we are cautioned darkly. And Paul is so much concerned and burdened with our spirituality. And that's why he's giving us this caution that we should be able to watch out and remain steadfast, anchored in the word of God. Because it's only when we are anchored in the word of God and the truth of the Bible that we can be able to stand this. Uh, when we read uh, Second Thessalonians uh, uh, chapter 2, we also see the church uh, being cautioned about the same problem. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, from verse 7, uh, the Bible says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. 
only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless, lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawlessness, one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So what we see here, uh, during this time, uh, the church was already uh, going through a persecution. And Paul actually gives a uh, caution to the church that from that time that indeed the lawlessness and this persecution, we and apostles will start from that, that period. And I want to say this, that this persecution has not stopped. And if anything, that the persecution has actually scaled up and is coming out in many ways. But Paul gives two reasons. And when you read verse 10, he gives uh, two reasons for this deception. One, I want us to read again verse 10, says, And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of truth, that they might be saved. So one, these people, yes, they had the message, but they did not receive it. They did not receive the truth. Number two, they did not believe in this message. So we are really um, caution that the lawlessness or the persecution and the apostasy which is going on is something that we need to be aware of. But basically then, we may be able to stand faithful to the word of God. During that period also, we see that many things happen. Uh, the second commandment in the Bible, he says that thou shalt not make any graven image and worship. Through uh, the, these deceptions, some idol image was or images were introduced in the church and people started worshiping, controlled the law of God. And so as we see in the great controversy of uh, chapter uh, 49, the Bible, uh, the, 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 the spirit of prophecy tells us that contrary to the second commandment, idols were introduced into the Christian worship. For millennia, idols were in the forefront of all power and rich religions to make Christians more acceptable to heathens Coming into the Christian church, pagan deities were renamed as so-called saints. Sunday, the day of worship for the sun god, was gradually adopted as the day of Christian worship in honor of the resurrection. This false day, not sanctioned scripture, prevails even now. Perhaps then, this was introduced and we have continued with this, Sister Spora. Do you think there are any other idols actually we are, are plaguing the ch Christian church today. today? Yes, indeed. There are many idols that are plaguing the church today. Anything that takes the place of God, as Christians, God comes first because that is where we draw everything from. Anything that takes precedence, anything that is given first priority becomes an idol, therefore. And some of these uh, things that we, we really worship include power. If you look at the world today and peop how people are killing and murdering each other for purposes of power, they have forgotten that power is God-given and they are going for it at whatever cost. Wealth, homes have been uh, broken. You get conflicts in homes because of fights for wealth. Even in, in, in nations, you'll find that uh, one community is fighting against another community, or even one country, another another country, because of the wealth, the land, and and all that. Um, fame, fame is another. So there are many things that we have put uh, in the place of God, and the moment we give them. Uh, more, more more prevalence, then such becomes an idol. And the the, the 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 prayer is that as elders warned 
indeed we need to choose the truth. We need to stretch our hand to God to, to lead us because even that which we, 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 we are now putting in place of God has been given by us to us by God himself. So yes, there are many idols uh, in the world today and some of them have uh, led. I remember the saying Jesus uh, gave uh, to his disciples when he was on earth that it is very hard for a rich man to go through, to go to heaven, than it is for a needle to go through, for, for, than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And just think of eye of a needle and a camel going through it. That is so hard for me as a Christian, a, a rich man to go to heaven, than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Not that Jesus did not, uh, you know, um, recognize wealth, but because of the place where we have put this wealth, it has become a stumbling block to accessing salvation. And so is, uh, is political power, so is fame, so is uh, anything that takes the place of God. Now, let me ask you a question, because how can we be safeguarded from the deception of Satan? Thank you. you know? It's powerful. We need to understand what is our shield against the deception of the devil. Thank you, Elder. And you know, for any war, you need some safeguard. You need some weapon. You need to prepare for, for any war. And in this great controversy, and today specifically, we are talking about light in the darkness. Mm. How do we remain light so that we are not compromised to cherish darkness and what is our safeguard we shall take a few, a few verses from the bible and then we will uh, understand what is really our safeguard but uh, the writer is telling us safeguarded by the word which is this word so john 17 15 says uh, verse 15 says i do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So we can only live like Jesus. We can only be taken out of the world if we cherish the truth, if we are sanctified by the truth. And the truth is the word of God. How do we know what truth is? The truth is the word of God, as the Bible is telling us. The same we would also compare with Acts 20, verse 32, which also I think Elder read it earlier. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So here, the word of grace is another, uh, or we are just emphasizing the word, the word of God. This word is given to us without, you know, without effort. It's accessible to us. The Bible is accessible. It's not one of the most expensive things. How many cars do we have? How many very expensive things do we have? So the word of God is given to us. Why? To build us up and give us an inheritance among, uh, so that we are sanctified before God. What the question is today is light versus darkness. For us, therefore, to be sanctified, to be the light, to walk in the path of righteousness, we need to understand the truth, which is the, source, which is the word of God and which is the source of light and which sanctifies us. And for us to do so, therefore, the Bible must be our shield. The writer says, the Bible is the invaluable revelation of God's will. It presents heaven's plan for humanity's salvation. Our salvation, our, our, our protection comes from understanding the word of God. And not just understanding, as we understand the word of God and live by the word of God. Therefore, 
we will be able to safeguard ourselves against the liar who is the devil. One verse in the Bible that really talks what the Bible does, what the Word of God does, comes from the book of Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. What 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 role does the Word therefore do? How is it a safeguard to us? Verse sixteen says, "All of Scripture, and that is the Word of God, mm -hmm. is given by inspiration of God." That this Word of God is given by inspiration. God himself has given this word to us. And why has he given us this word? It goes on to say it is profitable for doctrine. Our doctrines as Christians are drawn from the word of God. It is for reproof. It's for correction. It admonishes us. It corrects us. It guides us. It leads us in the correct and the right path. It is for instruction. It instructs us step by step on how we are supposed to live as children of God. And finally says in righteousness for instruction, not just instruction. Which instruction? Is it instruction for, for the devil or which kind of instruction? The Bible is clear that the word of God, which is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. And when, therefore, we cherish this word of God by reading, by meditating it upon it day and night, by depending upon the Holy Spirit to lead us, then we are safeguarded against uh, the devil who is every day out there looking for us, trying to twist that which we know so that we can fall prey and uh, fail to understand the will of God. So therefore, what we are saying finally, or in general, is that the Bible is the source of truth. It exposes evil. Because if you understand truth, therefore, you are safeguarded against evil. It exposes the devil and uh, his plans. And so, we are able to understand who Christ is. We understand his love. We are we understand where he is today and what is he doing for us. Seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us. How did we know that? We have known that because we've been led by the Spirit to read the Word of God. And therefore, we understand. As the writer says, finally, that we must fight against any and all attempts to undermine the authority of the Word of God. We have a role to play to make sure that the Word of God is not undermined by the devil who tries to twist it, even from those who, while professing great love for the Bible, bring doubts upon it. Sometimes we have people who have really learned so much about the Bible, and they have understood it not for, for the benefit of those who are Christians, but for their own selfish gains. And so they, 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 they present it in such a way that it is so convincing that it, if we are not careful, we are drawn away from the truth. The writer is telling us that we should be aware of such and be able to defend the Bible and make sure that it remains sanctified, it remains the way that God wanted it. The Bible, they argue, some of these people, is the writings of kings, shepherds, fishermen, priests. You know, there are those who come up like that, trying to uh, take, us, take us away from the will of God. But we have been warned. To be careful and also to make sure that the Bible is not undermined at whatever cost because it is our guard, as our safeguard against evil and it, is, it leads us to heaven. Thank, Thank you, Sister Spora. Indeed, the Word of God is our safeguard and um, it is, the entire scripture is inspired. And the author of the Bible is God himself because he is the one who inspired those who wrote the Bible. You know, one thing that the devil tries to uh, do or one of his strategies is perhaps make us believe that some parts of the Bible are obsolete or they are not relevant. And that's why I love this prayer by Jesus Christ in John 17, which sister has talked, uh, verse 17, God says, 
Jesus Christ says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is what? Truth. truth. From verse 16 it says, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Yes, we were, Christ left us here, but he has left with us his word. And his prayer that this word may sanctify us. Indeed, all Christians are sanctified. They are set apart for sacred, cleansed, and made holy. Mm-hmm. And uh, through believing and obeying the word of God. So we need to apply this word daily so that it will be able to purify us. It will be able to purify our minds and our hearts. And uh, what does scripture do? It points to us sin. And as it points to us sin, it also motivates us to converse. Mm-hmm. and be able to renew our relationship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, the Bible is able to guide. As Jesus himself said, it's the truth. And he, the truth, will set us free if we remain anchored in the word of God. Mm-hmm. So, um, as God's children, Satan has also sometimes tried to make men to lean or to, 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 to trust in other human beings, yeah? Um, as we search for divine truth, and this is what's happening. Uh, as the Russian writer is reminding us, is that truth is not of human origin. Truth is actually divine revelation. Mm -hmm. We get through the word of God. Um, Going through the lesson, the lesson reminds us that the Holy Spirit works through our minds. He invites us to explore mysteries of the universe. And so, truth, as the book of Revelation, uh, Proverbs 16, 26, tells us, Proverbs 16, 26. Yes, yes, I can yeah. read mm-hmm. this. The person who labors, labors for himself, for his hungry mouth drives him on. 16, 26. Yeah, 25, 25. Sorry, 25 says, there is a way that seems right mm-hmm. to a man, yeah. but its end is the way of death. I just want to ask, combine it with um, Judges uh, 21, verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So, what the situation here is that everyone became his own authority and acted on his own opinion, right or wrong. So what one felt was right, and that is what is right. Whether it was wrong or not, but because his own pre- uh, opinion prevailed. And the results were horrible and disastrous. So our world today is more or less the same. Individuals, groups have made themselves define authorities without reference to God. We must submit all our plans, our desires, and our motives to God. And uh, to be really heroes in the present world, we must go into battle each day in our home, in our workplaces, even in our church and the society with God with us. Our weapon or weapons are the standards, morals, truths, and convictions we receive from the word of God. And sometimes what the devil has tried to do is make people I 
feel that they can be able to, by their own opinions or judgments, decipher good or wrong. But as we are given an example here, the writer of the reason told us that he is a, was a very experienced um, hiker and he went to, um, to hike in a forest. But in the process, he lost. He, he, he got lost and de derailed himself for over five kilometers away. And although he was an experienced person, he realized that actually he needed help. And uh, thankfully, there was uh, another group by, nearby who knew their way out of the forest. And so, what does this tell us? Sometimes, even the most experienced hiker will lose his way without a compass. And as children of God, God has given us a compass. And what is the compass? God says, God has not left us alone on our journey from earth to heaven. Because our ultimate destiny, the destination is heaven. The Holy Spirit points us to the sacred scriptures that lead us homeward. Truth and error, right and wrong, good and evil, these can be correctly understood only in light of God's word. Therefore, God has given us a helper. Jesus Christ prayed that as he goes, he will send a helper. This helper is a teacher, is our guide. And therefore, we need to invite and rely on the Holy Spirit as we study the Word of God to be able to guide us through this forest of darkness, darkness with evil. And so as we are going through this, there's a question down there, Sister Spora. Why is the human mind without the aid of the Holy Spirit incapable of discovering divine truth? Yeah. It is the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was here physically. But when he went, he said, I will send a helper, the Holy Spirit. So his present is now our helper leading and guiding us into the truth, the divine truth of God. Uh, let me, as we are coming to um, Thursday, um, we are seeing the great controversy uh, summed or summarized as the battle of the mind. So this controversy is about the battle of our mind. We have been talking about the light. We have been talking about darkness. Thank you, Elder. Can you be able to take us through yeah, just a, a little before I get to the battle of the mind, human reasoning apart from scripture, this reminds me of a few things. Uh, I see the relationship that is expected of us as Christians is that of dependence of a superior being and who is God. That the moment we remove this dependence and we remain on our own, that now becomes human reasoning. That now means that we are on our own. And so therefore, that help that we were to get from one who is superior because we are inferior, we are his creatures, is withdrawn and we lose it. Just think of an ordinary example of uh, a person who goes to an exam room and uh, has of a confidence that this is a very simple exam. Uh, sometimes... Even what they thought was simple uh, turns out that they have done very poorly because the grace of God is withdrawn. Mm -hmm. In whatever circumstances, whether we think we are champions, whether we think we have known it, even what we know has come from God, we should not lose sight of God in everything that we do. The moment we do it, there is no expert. There is no one who cannot lose it when he or she is in his own, on his, is on his own. Now, the battle for the mind, this great controversy, it starts somewhere. Someone has to, or something has to happen in the mind so for action to, to take place. The writer takes us to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. 
Second Corinthians. Yeah, the Bible says. Yes. But even if our gospel is failed, it is failed to those who are perishing, mm -hmm. whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, for you. Jesus' sake. Yes, we are blinded because we have kept off the gospel. The writer clearly says that the gospel is veiled. Why? It is veiled for those who are perishing. And who are those who are perishing? Those who have chosen not to seek scripture, not to believe in Christ or to believe in God. So therefore you are blinded. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. And once we are blinded, then are we going to make the right judgment? Are we going to walk in the right path? Just try one day walking in darkness. How will you proceed? Could you feel safe? Would you walk? If there was a snake on your way, would you know it was there? You would just step on it and it may, probably it would bite you. So therefore, uh, the battle of the mind is very significant to those of us who are uh, understanding the will of God. Because the writer is telling us that the mind um, is, is, is our mental faculties. And if it is our mental faculties, the Bible is supposed to enlighten our mental faculties. Or if we do not allow the Word of God or the Holy Spirit to guide us and get enlightened, then therefore, what takes uh, shape in there is, is, the, is the devil uh, trying to, 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 to direct our steps. The writer says that the battle between Christ and Satan is a battle for the minds of men. The battle is in the mind. Mm -hmm. It's between Christ and the devil, but it, it happens in the mind. And I, I believe, Elder, well that for, before we do anything, it must be processed in the mind. What we do today is reflected, uh, uh, auto-reflects what is in the mind. That's, that's very true, a sister, because actually what the devil wants is to occupy the mind. Yes. And on the other hand, Christ wants to occupy the mind. Perhaps then, as we look at it, is what are the strategies or the ways that Satan wants to occupy our minds? Yes. How does he seek to occupy our minds? So what? that Yes. yes. One, One of the things that we have seen before is that Satan does not want us to read the Word of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the moment we do not read the Word of God, we become very ignorant of the Word of God. We get so busy with things of this world to an extent that we do not even have a minute to read the Word of God. And the moment we do not read the Word of God, then we are bound to make wrong judgment. We are blinded by the devil. The writer um, tells us a number of things, but I just wanted us to look at Romans 7.23 and we see um, Romans 7.23 says yeah, the writer says sorry, sorry, not Romans 7.23, yes says but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members yes so if you go a little higher it says for i delight in the law of god according mm -hmm. to the inward man the inward mind who is the inward man the mind delights in the law of God. But when you go down, other than that, I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind mm -hmm. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is 
in my members. The writer is telling us that Satan's principal work is to blind or darken men's minds. And once this is done, he does this by keeping them from the study of the word of God. A very important, and, and most of us are victims. We are too busy to even have a minute to read the, the word of God. By deranging the powers of the mind through excesses of the body and the soul, and by wholly occupying the mind through things of this life. The mind is fully occupied with things of this life. How do I make this? How do I pay fees? How do I satisfy my employer? How do I, you know, how, how do I make sure my children are doing the right thing? We are full of things that are not, that should not be the priority. The writer goes on to say that by wholly occupying the mind through the things of this life and by appealing to the pride and self-exaltation, pride, self-exaltation, we have put God aside and we are living on our own. The mind has been taken captive by lawlessness and what is reflected in what we do is what is in the mind. The lack of knowledge on the part of the lost is not because they could not know. It is because they will not know. Men have not, uh, have had every opportunity to know the truth, but they choose to believe uh, the devil because he has blinded their eyes. So another thing I see here, indeed, we have a choice to, to do that which is right. To occupy our minds with the right message by reading the word of God. But the moment we occupy ourselves with other things and we put the word of God aside, then so many things are going wrong, and especially uh, when we talk about spirituality. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 4, 5, and 9, and 14, I read those ones and they are very interesting. But in short, what the writer is trying to tell us is that you read all of them and you see that the light for our mind to, 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 to overcome this battle of the mind, we need to look at Jesus, who is the life, who is the light, from whom we were delivered. I just want to pick one of them, uh, John, just John chapter 1, and then we read... John chapter 1, sorry. John chapter 1, verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In who? In Jesus was life. And this Jesus was the light of men. For him to become our light, we need to embrace him. We need to depend on him. We, not, we need not to depend on human reasoning. Our mind, the battle of the mind, is won if we depend and look at Jesus as our, our, our source of light. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. If you continue, verse 9 says, that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. The true light is, is Jesus Christ, is the word of God. And this word of God, we need to feed on it. We need to, 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 to accept Jesus became human. He became flesh. He lived with us. He set for us an example. He went away and left behind the power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, for us as Christians, in spite of the di distortions, the challenges that are here today because of the great controversy, we are able to stand, we are able to serve him faithfully if Jesus remains our light, our redemption, we accept his grace, Nothing can separate us from the will of God, from his love, if we depend on him. Nothing. Elder, nothing. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Indeed, Christ is the light, and the Christ offers us his light in his word. Amen. On the other hand, Satan seeks 
uh, to darken our minds want to keep us in the dark but as the Christians of the first church or the new testament believers they totally committed themselves to Christ and depended upon his word and they were able to overcome mm-hmm. and it's true even if certain darkens our way the light of Christ Jesus will continue and would continue to shine and to give us give us victory thank you may god bless you i just want to whisper prayer lord our father we thank you oh god for your wonderful word for lord jesus christ you are our light we want us to walk in the light as we head homeward to our eternal home eternal god you are we are on earth earth which is darkened by the evil one but we praise you o oh lord for reminding us to continue depending upon your word because you are the way the truth and life we are looking forward to your soon coming eternal god and therefore may you keep us safe safe guide us by your word which is a true wall and safeguard against the distortions of the evil one thank you lord for taking us through this lesson for his prayer in jesus christ Amen. thank you but well, thank you we meet next sabbath